All right, folks, good morning. Good morning, hopefully you can hear me. Let me make sure that I have my, my volume working. It looks like I think I do. Yeah, I do, cool. How are you all doing? Um, better than me, I hope. <laughs> God, what a horrible morning. Um, anyway, I'm happy to be here with you all, but boy, oh boy, what a struggle. Um, I said this in the garage during the, uh, the daily paycheck today. I was up all night last night. I actually did um, a bunch of slow motion video last night of, the, of my horizontal throw, trying to, you know, get a visual on it up close. Now that I got a better setup out there. Um, good stuff, actually. There's a, actually some interesting things. I can see. I can see some of the throws absolutely being perfect, like absolutely perfection. Then most of them are, are garbage, right? So it's like you you see like it gives you enough hope to go. That's what I'm looking for, but this is where I'm at most of the time. Um, but anyway, it was, it was, it was fun, but I, man, I was up all night, tossed and turning, couldn't sleep at all. I got a huge headache this morning, went out in the garage for the bad attitude, freezing cold and shot like ass all morning. It was like one of my worst daily paycheck rolls ever. I think one of, one of probably the top five worst rolls ever of all time. Um, so we got beat, we got beat pretty bad. Let's take a look at the numbers. Um, so far, the gunslinger now um, went from being one of the leaders in the clubhouse to, to being one of the losers. Um, we're five and two, which is good. Five wins is great. The two losses, though, were catastrophic. Um, and here's the verdict of this thing. Um, and I have one more day to go here. Today's, today's play was aggressive. It didn't matter because even if it was a passive, easy, same bet play, we still would have lost a couple thousand bucks. There's no way around it. Today was an ass kicking. Um, the four and 10 strategies like this one are literally swink or swim. Like you don't get the fours and tens, that's where the money is, you don't win. Like if your fours and tens are not happening, it ain't happening. Um, we <clears throat> laddered up from $100 in the four and 10, laddered up $25 after each loss. Okay, 25 bucks. My final four and 10 bet were four or 275 each. That'll tell you how many sevens I rolled before the fours and tens. Now I did hit two in the middle there and I parlayed them and lost the parlay. So there was two, two that were rolled in that process, but we were up going to level eight on the ladder. Okay, level eight on that ladder. Um, it is what it is, man. Today, the sevens were brutal. The fours and tens never showed up and it is what it is. Um, ladders are great. Ladders are a great strategy and the mathematically they seem like they're gonna work. In a chop, they're gonna work great. But if the ladder doesn't work, and today it didn't work, the, 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 the coming down the ladder never happened one time. It happened one, like one time it happened with the inside numbers. If you never come down the ladder, you're gonna fall. It's gonna get too teetery at the top and you're just gonna go down in flames. That's what happened today. So ladders, dangerous. Four and 10, dangerous. Combine them both together and throw a bunch of sevens, you get your ass kicked. And that's what happened today. So today was a, a catastrophe of, of, of errors on my part, right? No, no good rolls and too many sevens and, and the system that I was playing didn't give me any out. It was just go, 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 go. And there was never a recovery because the recovery never had a, a had a chance to happen and B, the bets just were getting too big to recover from. So not a good showing, not a good showing at all. Um, had I decided how I feel about DI, I still feel really good about DI. I don't not, I'm, I'll show you the slow-mo later on. Honest to God, today, my fingers were so cold, they're still freezing. I've, I've, been, I've been holding my coffee cup like this since I got in the house. Like it's, it was so cold out there and I had such a bad headache that I was literally, my hands were shaking all morning. Like I could barely pick them up. I was literally this morning holding them and I was like, like, like this, trying to get them to even release. Today there was no DI at all, none at all. Um, to, Alfredo wants to know that I changed sets. I did change sets. I actually, here's what I did. I, I went out there first with my normal, my stacked ones. That was my, my first set that I, that I was on. That wasn't, everything was, it was every other throw was a seven. Um, so I changed it um, to essentially what, what's a three V. And I'll show you what I did here. I went um, with this set. 
I did the four five, right, stacked, which effectively becomes the three V stacked. So the ones go to the side in that in that set. That didn't work at all. Then I went and for the for the minute that it did okay, I did this set. I had the uh, the six and the or sorry, the six and the four stacked. So I had the six and the three kissing. Um, is what I did there. So that worked a little bit towards the end. No matter what I did though, it didn't matter. I was so random because I couldn't I couldn't even pick them up. So it was awful. It was awful. I tried everything that I know how to try. Um, and yeah, I'm not great with sets yet. Um, I was just trying to see if I could make the make what was happening work. <laughs> nope, <laughs> it did not matter at all. Um, yeah, 100%. Today was guessing, all guesswork today. Um, when you don't know what's coming, like there's days I throw my dice, I know what's coming, I know where I'm at. Days like today, I got no idea. And I'm literally just putting more and more and more and more and more money out there to try and catch the, catch the comeback. That comeback never freaking came, man. It was brutal. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, I think that's that's all I, all, all I got to say. Uh, this is a tough one. Um, I like the strategy in, in theory, but um, stuff like this, when it's when it goes too south, you can't recover from it, and there's no built-in plan. So, um, and I love you too, Ken. Uh, I did suck today, and the strategy doesn't suck. It just it it can't survive this, right? And I think that's the, that's the thing. When you put yourself $3,000 in the hole because your ladders are getting picked every single time, I don't know if a strategy out there that comes back too good from that. Um, we did have a couple that did, right? The horseman came flying back a couple times. The cum ladder came flying back. The um, three-point dolly from the don't came flying back after I picked off a bunch of points. That thing came roaring back. Some of these things have got a really good trajectory to dig out of a hole with. Some of them just don't. They need a home run. So... Is what it is, guys. That's what uh, that's um, my report for today. Is, is it's not a happy one, but hey, here we are. Um, let's move. Let's move ahead. Here we go. Um, how do you know if you're a douchebag? Well, here's the thing. Um, I love my don't pass betters. I'm a don't pass better. I'm a don't come better. I love playing the don't. Okay, most of the time, that's where my happy place is. I will get aggressive in the box sometimes, but I'm not the douchebag that calls for a seven, right? Give me a seven. Give me a seven or Big red, I've seen people call big red when the dice are in the air. Don't, I almost want to say the A word. Don't be a douchebag and be that don't pass guy. Don't over celebrate it. You're allowed to be happy, right? You can give a little whatever, right? Get your money. But don't be pointing and don't be calling for the seven, okay? Um, yeah, you want to win. I get it. Um, everybody else does too. And, you know, when you're, when you're winning, remember, if you're celebrating somebody else's loss when you're winning, it makes you kind of a douchebag. You can be happy and all that kind of stuff, but don't be... Just don't be, uh, don't be calling for other people to lose their money in mid-roll. Don't be saying seven on purpose a bunch of times. Just don't be that guy. I've seen that guy. Um, he thinks he's being funny. He thinks he's being cute. He's an asshole. Okay? He's a douchebag, and don't be that guy. Just take your money, take your payment, get the hell out of here, guys. Right? That's, that's the thing. Unless you're playing with Charlie. Unless you're playing Charlie. Thanks for the super chat, pal. Unless you're with DGE and the whole table's on the don't with you then it's cool. Then you guys can all be cheering for the seven. You can shake them as hard as you want to and give them the old Greg overhand throw and grab the big red and count your money, right? But if it's you against eight other people, let's not be calling out loud for them to all lose their money, please. Don't be a douchebag. All right, there's, there's that. Let's, um, let's move ahead, guys. Um, ah, what's happening here? Friday Night Fights. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be traveling. So Chris and Jeff have got Friday Night Fights covered. I'm not sure who's dealing, who's boxing, but they will figure it out, I'm sure, between them. And it'll be Galen R, our new champion, versus Craig, old Craig from Old Blake Craps. I'm going to be on vacation, as you know. I'm leaving Friday morning for Jersey. Dad's 80th birthday, bunch of family stuff going on. I'm going to be in AC one day. I'll be in, in Philadelphia casinos one day. Um, wish me luck ahead of time. Um, but I will um, be putting some videos out for you. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I haven't done anything yet. I'll do it all tonight, probably. But... Um, I'm going to film some practice sessions. Um, wager me this style. Just turn the camera on, talk through it, roll some dice out, and kind of have some fun. I'll make those your daily paychecks. I'll put those out in the morning at 7 o'clock just to have some, something to watch. If somebody wants to run a crapsy session against the rolls that I'm doing, that'd be really cool. You guys can play along. Um, somebody just has to start a table up and, and <clears throat> enter rolls in. That'd be super cool. 
Um, I'm cutting down slow motion video tonight. I got a bunch of it. It's going to take me a long time to do. It's, it's hard to get the slow motion cut right so you can see the roll and then the slow-mo behind it and some analysis. But that's going to be probably one full coffee and crafts next week will be a pre-recorded breakdown of slow motion shots, which will be like watching paint dry, I guess. Um, I do have a slow motion or I do have another coffee and crafts filmed and cut out as well for next week, which is going to be a behind the scenes one. I'm going to walk you around the house. I'll show you this. I have, I'm just showing you the new room setup that I got here. I'll show you the room setup and how where, where the cameras are, what the desk looks like. I'll show you the garage setup and how that's all going now and where it's headed. And then I, I filmed myself making a short. So I did a short. I actually cut down one of these douchebag segments and I'll show you how I do my shorts. So you can see kind of a why I'm doing the douchebag segments and why they're so so tiny and how I'm making shorts out of them. So I'll, get, I'll let you watch that too. It'll be a fun little look behind the scenes. Um, I may do another one where I'm kind of just bitching about stuff. I don't know, um, like a little pre-recorded thing, but you'll have, you'll have shows next week to watch, but they won't be like interactive like we normally do. They won't be live roles like normal. It'll be just some practice -y stuff. So um, <clears throat> there we go. Um, let's see, what else? Um, what else? Anything in chat you all want to talk? Before I jump into my, my thing today, anything in chat you all want to talk about? Um, PC, uh, Victor says, if you're the only don't better and table full of pass line betters, you might be one. Well, again, everybody's allowed to make money. And this is the thing, right? I, and I got to, let me go back to the screen because that's actually a, a good, a good kind of thing to talk through. Everybody's allowed to make money at the table. Like there's no, and this is why I fucking hate craft lists because you're not, you can't, you can't be a don't better on a craft list table. One of the reasons, one of the, and maybe I'll do a video, the five, the five reasons never to play crapless craps. That might be a video for next week. Um, but one of the reasons is there's no don't. And it's okay if a don't pass better makes money. It's okay if the right side better makes money. That's totally fine. What you shouldn't do, this is not poker. In poker, I'm trying to take your money, right? If I win, I'm taking your money in poker. That's, that's me against you. That's cool, right? In craps, when I win, I'm not taking your money. I'm taking their money. And you're taking their money too when you win. Um, however, when I win on the don't, it always means that you lose, right? If I'm winning on the don't, that means you ha somebody has to lose for me to win, which is diff the vibe is different there, right? On the right side, the fact that you're winning does not necessarily mean that I'm losing on the don't. I could be on a don't point of four. You could be hitting 50 box numbers. You're winning. I'm not losing necessarily. There's a difference in energy there. So... Um, you're not a douchebag if you're betting the don't, but you're a douchebag if you're betting the don't and you're being a dick about it. Let's just, let's just say it like that. Um, hope that makes, um, and skill says, what about the right side players tormented a hundred percent, dude, a hundred percent that, that goes both ways. Um, the, what I find though, is that the don't pass players that are the douchey one. And I, again, this is not like your normal play, the douchey don't players that are like, Seven, 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 or like pointing at people when they when they when they win on the seven. That's what I'm talking about. That's rare, but they're obvious, and they're just you can you can smell that guy coming a mile away, right? The right side guys who are pointing at the don't guys when they win, they're doing it because the don't pass player was a douchebag earlier. I guarantee you, I've never never is a strong word. Hyper rarely have seen a right side better give me shit for, for the, my don't pass bet when they win and I lose almost never because I'm never in their face. Like I don't earn, I don't earn that kind of payback by the way I stand there and play. If you're, if you're getting that from a right side better, look at yourself in the mirror because you've done something to earn it. Most likely, most likely you've done something to earn it. And there's that. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm salty today, guys. I'm, mm. what else? I'm going to check my PCs before I start rolling out. Cause I, I think the wind craps today is going to be a quick one. Um, Buck, I don't feel bad about this morning. Um, you did worse with money on the line. I, yeah, I've done it too. I have done it too. <laughs> that played bad. Victor invested in Hunter socks. Well, the problem, and Jen actually offered me gloves, but like then I can't throw, right? You got to have something. I think uh, Ian wants to bring me his heater. Some days, I, I tell you what, I honestly think I'm getting a cold. <clears throat> the last two days, um, and, and you guys don't know this, but I have diabetes. So when you have diabetes, your fingertips and your toes tend to get really numb really quick. They go cold super fast. Like if anything goes wrong in the temperature, my hands feel it. My fingertips just go away. The last two days, just working down here, I've lost my right fingers like 
two days in a row, I can't feel anything. I'm typing down here, I can't feel the keys. Just in my house. So I think that means I'm getting a little something. So yeah, I don't think a heater would have helped me today. It just, it is what it is. Sometimes they, sometimes they just go away, you know, and that is what it is. Um, let's see, who else? Um, hand lotion, yeah, right. Um, Yes, great. That that Leah, that's right. I get one of those. Those that'd be great. I, actually, it's funny. I actually am wearing a sweatshirt today, so I could be in here getting my hands warm. But I need one of those. Yeah, those neoprene things that that the quarter. But then I could be cool, right? What I really should do is have the neoprene thing for my hands and like a playbook that's on my arm, like and be at the crap table with like my hands in the thing and a playbook. And I can check the playbook, get my hands out of the thing, and throw the dice. They'd be telling stories about me forever if I did that. That'd be kind of fun. All right, let's move on. Let's move ahead. Um, and what else we want to talk about? Oh, you know what? Um, I want to show you one more thing, actually. I want to show you one more thing before I go to the crapsy. I want to wind back here to this thing here. I, I meant to show you this earlier. Um, let me go and do the screen share thing and move this over. This is the this is the chart for the gunslinger. And I want to show you a couple of things here that make this stand out to me. Um, you see the two big butt kickings, right? Now you know that I'm a stop loss zero type of player, okay? However, this is alarming, and I and I you can see here the pattern. I went back and counted everything. Okay, the pattern is this: when we win, look at the number of rolls. Every time this thing has won, it's been a handful of rolls. You walk in, you walk out, you're in, and you're pretty much done, right? You're pretty much done. Um, when you have a problem, every time I've had a problem, this one lasted two days. I tried to come back at lunch and win that day. It didn't work. This one was today. I, I did, today's roll count was about 50, maybe a little more than that. Um, when you have a problem in some of these things, the roll count gets too high. I always tell you about time being your biggest enemy in craps. This is kind of proof of that, right? When you hit it quick and you're working from ahead, you're, the, you're a genius and you're a champion. When you're working from behind like this, it's really, really hard to make any kind of hay. Um, other strategies, look at the five, 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 six, seven, eight, right? We had two days where we worked from behind and a high roll count, very high roll counts those days, right? Um, this is this is wrong. This th these should be um, that should be that's the day that I won the, all the all the money. Um, here's some fight back though, right? Here's a, here's a strategy that had two days where it fought back from high roll counts and one, right? That's interesting. I look at strategies and I, that's the kind of thing I see. I'm like, how did it do on days where there was a lot of rolls? This one actually came back and fought back on a day with a lot of rolls. Um, this day here again, I, for some reason that's, I copied and pasted that. That was probably a, a 60 roll day because we had that 35 roller, 35 roller. Um, Here's the one day where it had the long roll and didn't fight back. But that's the kind of thing that strikes me when I look at these strategies and how they perform. It's not just the numbers of wins and losses, which is an important thing. It's how do they sustain during that time, right? What did the O-line do? The O-line, I think, lost. Oh, I didn't put the roll counts in. I got to go back and do that. Um, yeah, one, one little butt kicking there. So anyway, that's, I just wanted to show you that. Um, it does move the gunslinger down into, in, into red and white territory, which means... Um, the greens here are 75% winners, and the greens here um, are 30 or 50% uh, profit winners. So at this point, there's only this many. Crossbow, 555678, five, the dolly, the offensive line, the mine, and the moon bow, the only ones that make the cut so far. The cum ladder is right there at 48%. It's close. Horseman, I may put into the finals just because I love it so much. Um, it's it's close. It only had one one day of loss. Anyway, I wanted to show you that because I think that's interesting. When you look at these things, it's not just dollars and dollars and cents lost. It's I, I think a lot of it comes down to um, how does it sustain a longer role, a longer set of rolls. The hedgier ones, the the horseman and the the um, the the moon bow and the other ones, they can withstand a bad sequence a little better and maybe come out of it. This latter thing <clears throat> just tanked, man. That thing freaking tanked. Um, Jen says the crossbow. I know the crossbow, I hate it so much, but man, that thing worked great. And honestly, you know, here's the thing. It's funny. I, I love this strategy, the gunslinger. It's a fun one. 
dangerous but fun. I love the crossbow now, and I love it because um, it's got all of my favorite elements in it. It's got a progressive dome, which I'm going to show you here in a minute. It's got um, it's got a nice black level collections on the box, which I love, and that's a Wayland thing, right? Wayland Wayland's iron cross, not laddered, works great. That thing works great because of the ladder system of, of the non laddering version of it. I love that thing. That that's my new my new kind of quote unquote go to. I think it's a great one. I, actually, I'm going to put that on my list. Um, yeah. Anyway, I. Yeah. Whatever. Th these are fun. I, I I am coming down to like you know the 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 in my pocket the book of John, book of Wayland's what a thousand strategies. The book of John's going to be like five. I'm going to have like five that I just love, and that's what we're going to do. All right, guys. Oh, Obey. Thank you for that. I am cool. I am the Fonzie of craps. A. Hey. Hey. All right, I did make myself a believer in the Iron Cross, but you know what? It takes working with Waylon to do it, right? It's like, I don't like the Iron Cross as a practice. In theory, it makes sense. I have my way of playing the don't. He's got his way of playing the Iron Cross. We went like this, just like Ken and I. We're working together and like, hey, here comes like this great thing out of the end of that, right? At the end of this week, I think yesterday's version of the Gunslinger is gonna be the great way to play it. That was way less susceptible to bad runs. Than today's was. I think we're we're finding we're finding out how to work together on these things, and we're finding out what actually works in the end. So, um, there we go. Okay. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Let's go. All right. Let's let's talk. Don't. Let's talk. Don't a little bit. Um, what have we learned so far about the don't pass? Let's get one more screen. Come on. There we go. We have learned a couple things. Right. We have learned. Um, not to hedge the sevens or the elevens, that that's ultimately gonna be a bigger bleed um, over the course of many, many rolls. In a single session, like we said yesterday, again, I'll use Greg's analogy, which is the perfect analogy. If you're getting punched in the face, cover your face, okay? If in a session you're getting whacked by elevens and sevens on the come out, you might wanna do a little bit of hedging or something to protect. If you're in that trend in that moment, that's what it makes sense to. But like he said, if don't walk around the street like with your hands covering your face, right? If you're not getting punched in the face, don't cover your face. It slows you down, right? That's why we say don't hedge the sevens or the yos unless you're in a trend where they're coming. If you're getting beat up, protect yourself. If you're not getting beat up, go. The flat, clean bets are a thousand times better. Same with the lays. All that protection is not needed. You don't gotta walk around like this or holding your money if you're walking around on a farm. Right, you go to the big city with dollar bills hanging out your pocket. Now you got to worry about stuff. That's what he's saying there, and it makes good sense. Yesterday we saw that two things were dominant. One is a progressive odds play. Okay, just dropping max odds everywhere mathematically seems like it's the right play. Shackelford says it so. However, we saw that the max odds player, a player playing one x odds, and a player playing progressive odds, meaning max odds four and ten. Half odds, five and nine, no odds, six and eight, dominated the day. Of those, of the odds players, that progressive odds player dominated the day. That's the way to play odds in the don't. Just like from the right side, the three point Johnny beats the three point Molly every single time because I take max odds, six and eight, half odds, five and nine, no odds, four and 10. Okay? It wins all the time because you're putting more money where you're more likely to win and less money where you're more likely to lose. The progression of that, those, those, those curves make great sense. We learned that, and we proved it yesterday. And we also proved that 20% flat bet ladder, I'm calling it the, the, the tiny ladder, that thing freaking destroys everything. That thing is awesome. Um, so a tiny ladder on the don't there, on the loss, pff, that thing is cool. Today I wanna look at some, at some flat progressions. And maybe tomorrow we'll look at an all-in-one special. So let's go, um, let me go to the table. I'm gonna show you a couple of things here at the table, and then we'll, we'll, we'll rock it out on Windcraps, and I'll give you a, a kind of a sense of where I'm gonna go today in Windcraps. And this won't be perfect, but it's gonna be damn close to perfect, okay? I'm gonna show you two progressions. I'm, I may do a third if I have time to code it up, okay? And let's work just on the don't pass, and I'll use, uh, I'll use black chips for it because they show up nice. Actually, we use yellow chips because they're cool. Um, let's bring our yellows out. Can you see the yellows pretty good down there? Nah, they're not that clear. I'll, I'll, I'll just do the greens. Greens are poppy. Here we go. Let's say we're in the don't pass, okay? And 
we're gonna do a couple of progression bettings, okay? One progression that I like, as you know, is my, um, um, my parlay press. We'll show that one first. So the parlay press means this. On the first win, you get paid a unit and you parlay the unit. Now remember, we're at level one. Let's mark the levels here, okay? At level one, that's where we are, we parlay it. If the parlay wins, fantastic, we go to level two, which means our flat bet is now two, okay? I'll put our wins down here. If that two wins, we parlay it. If the parlay wins, it wins four, and we go to level three, which means our flat bet is now three units, and we brought back seven units already, okay? If that one wins, we parlay it to six units, and again, if six units wins, we go to level four, bring our bet down to level four, and now our rack is loaded, right? That's the parlay press. It's a simple thing. It needs four wins in a row, you're gonna be banking money, big time, okay? It needs a run, okay? The nice thing about this is that in that whole run, I never had more than one unit out of my rack. I started with one unit. If it goes down, at any point in time it goes down, it costs you the one unit, you'd try it again. There's no additional monies going out, which I like. That's one. The other one we're gonna try today is the one, two, three, four. Super simple, right? No parlaying. You're gonna win one, or the, I guess the first one's kind of a parlay, right? The first bet you win, your next bet is two. You win two, your next bet is three. You win three, your next bet is four. And we keep on doing this over and over again. You win four, your next bet is five. Just keep on rocking it one unit pressing at a time, and at some point in time, we'll put a threshold on it, go back to base, and you can win all that, right? That's kind of how that works, right? The one, two, three, four is a simple up, 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 one unit every single time. Super easy progression to make. And the last one that we're gonna work on, I think, is the Barstow. And the Barstow is a little more complicated. That's actually easy in Windcraps to do this, but the Barstow works, it's basically up, two, down, one, so this one does cost you a chip out of your rack. Now, most people play the Barstow, same bet the first one. It pays here, same bet. So you bring one back to your rack. On the next win, it pays, you go to two, plus the one you won. So you go up two every win. You win three, you go up two, rack a chip. You go two, three, four, five, you go up two, rack the rest. Now you're at a six unit bet. One, two, three, four, five, six, up two, rack the rest. And you keep doing this, and again, at some point, you say, I'm done, maybe it's a 10 unit, whatever, back down to one, and you've got all that in the rack, okay? If at any point in time the Barstow loses, let's say, let's say, that, you're, let's say that you're here at the six unit level, and it loses, you're gonna lose six, you go back out at five. So it's up two on a win, down one on a loss. And you keep hammering it. And again, at some point, you reset your bets back to, back to base. That's our three today. We're gonna run those three things today on those basic, basic levels. There's no laddering losses on the flat bets. There's no odds being taken. On any of these, let's go to, actually go here. On any of these, if I'm in the parlay press, let's say the parlay press and I got up to three units, level three and they don't pass. There's nothing to set, no reason why I can't say I'm parlay pressing the flat and I'm at the same time going to drop 600 bucks in odds when the point's a four. You can still drop progressive odds with that flat bet moving, right? The flat bet can be seen as a separate play than your odds. So you can always take max half no odds based on the size of your flat bet. The flat bet just gives you higher ceiling than your odds. If you want to do, combine the things and do, let's do the parlay press or let's do the barstow with max min odds, right? You could be crushing souls if that's how you decide to do it. We're going to do just the flats by themselves because I want you to see what it looks like um, with just those flats on their own. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? So we're going we're gonna to go ahead. Yeah, Victor says, progress the flats and odds together. So bigger flats means your 2x odds is four times what it used to be, right? So your flats give you a better foundation to put bigger odds out there if you wanna do it. Now I'm gonna go win craps now <clears throat> and we're gonna do it without, let me get my screen changed here. 
We're gonna do this without any odds. I'm gonna go ahead and change to that so you can see it. Um, we're gonna do this without odds because I want you to see just how the flat bets and nothing else do. You got me? Just how the flats do. Hey, old number seven's here, cool. Um, here we go, we're gonna go and here's all my players. I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a hot minute to get you through it, but I got my table is full. This is a table full of don't players. This is the table that you can scream for the seven on because everybody here is playing the don't all together. So here we go. Um, the don't pass clean player, he's gonna be our, our baseline guy, right? All he's doing every single time is a $25 don't pass bet and nothing else. You will see that his, his graph will be flat. Right? Matter of fact, he's probably gonna win about 500 bucks, thereabouts. The next player that we're gonna look at is gonna be this don't pass progressive odds. This is the guy that wins good. He won, he won the day yesterday. Um, his base bet is 25 bucks, and what he's gonna do is um, always stay at the base bet on the, on, the, on the line. If it's a four and 10, we're gonna go 10X or 5X odds here. He's gonna go um, basically base bet times five, which is five times the base bet is the win goal. You gotta multiply it by two to get the odds, right? On the five and nine, we're gonna go double, look for a two unit win, okay? And multiply by one and a half to get our odds right. So that's gonna be his thing. He's gonna be 5X on the, on the four and 10. He's gonna be about 2X or so on the five and nine. That's the progressive odds player. $25 base bet. I have another guy who's doing progressive odds. His thing will be different. He's gonna go a little skewed, smaller base bet, $10, okay? He's gonna go 10X on the four and 10 and 5X on the five and nine. So he's gonna go smaller flat, way bigger odds, okay? The difference between these two players is gonna be pretty obvious, right? One guy is gonna get hurt more on the come out sevens and 11s. This guy with 25 bucks. Um, he'll of course win more on the twos and threes. So really it's the difference of the 15 bucks between their base bets on the seven. That's gonna be a huge difference. Also when points get hit, the flat bet is gonna be differing in size. You follow me? So the difference here is gonna be this 10 or 15 bucks. Their odds will be about the same on most bets. It's really the flat bet that's gonna be a difference. Watch how this thing maintains itself. It's actually pretty cool. Um, that's our two progressive players. Then I've got the uh, tiny ladder guy, the Newberry system, which is same bet, minus five bucks if we win, same bet, plus five bucks if we lose. We're gonna do a little $5 ladder, and that's the whole thing. If we happen to get below our bank, or um, um, <clears throat> our initial, <clears throat> excuse me, our initial bet, um, then we're gonna go um, uh, with back to the base. Nice and simple. The next player, here's where it gets fun, okay? We have the one, two, three, four player. Um, all he's gonna do is this. On his winning bet, he's gonna same bet plus a quarter. That's it, same bet plus a quarter, just like I did over there. Every time, one, then two, then three, then four. Up by one unit every time he wins, no big deal. Now, I am gonna do this, we're gonna cap it. We can cap it wherever we want to, okay? Um, I put it at 500 bucks, we can cap it to keep it kind of more realistic at 200 bucks. Right, you get eight wins in a row in the don't pass, by the way, to get your bet to 200 bucks, you're doing work. Um, that might be a thing. I wanna keep these guys at the same ceiling for the most part, if I can do it. I think you'll see that some guys get to the ceiling quick and some guys get there slower. So there's that one, 200 bucks for the one, two, three, four. Next player, where's my mouse? Next player is gonna be the Parlay Press. That's my, 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 shoot, my choice. What we do here is, Base bet's a quarter, our level is one. Parlay is gonna be one or zero, letting us know if we're supposed to parlay or not. Our next bet is gonna be the base bet um, to start out with. So <clears throat> um, if our don't pass is greater than, let's, again, we'll cap them at 200 bucks. Um, then we set our level to one and our parlay to one. If our parlay is one and we win, we're gonna double the bet. Okay, we take our whole win and put it up there. If our, otherwise we set the parlay to zero and just do our same, our bet plus our base level. Nice and simple, right? This one here, base bet plus level, or base bet times level, or it's we parlay the win, one of the two. Keeps going up at 200 bucks, we'll bug out. We'll cap it at 200 bucks. Okay, then we have the uh, Barstow, and the Barstow is easy. It's basically, 
On a win, same bet plus two units. On a loss, same bet minus a unit. That's the whole bar stow. It's very, very simple. And again, we'll cap him at 200 bucks. That way they all have the same ceiling. They all come back to base at the same rate. Okay, there it is. Let's do a game new. We'll run this out here. Game, a new game. Uh, yes, we'll save everybody. Save, save, save. Not saving the session. Okay, and the first time we do it, let's grab my rolls. Statistics, or action rather, roll files. We'll do John's rolls. This is my, my, my DI practice rolls. Let's run it out and see what happens. This won't take very long. I'm only going to show one graph because if I show all five graphs, it takes forever to run. So let's just do it like this. Okay, there we go. We're done. Let's look at the numbers. Who won money? Well, look at this. Um, the don't pass clean, flat old don't pass against, against John won 500 bucks. The progressive odds, which is the flat 25 with the 5X or 2X odds won 2,400 bucks. The small progressive, which is the $10 flat and 10X odds and 5X odds won 1,850. So it was only a few hundred bucks behind, which is interesting. Um, there's, there's, Food for thought in there. Um, you win almost as much, but you're bearing a lot less come out risk, which I think is interesting. So if you're if you're a smaller bankroll, that smaller flat with bigger odds might be your way to go. Um, tiny ladder, fifteen hundred bucks against even my awesome rolls. Um, here goes the fun stuff. The the one two three four lost money, which is interesting. The Parlay Press won a thousand bucks, and the Barstow won thirty three. The Barstow is the big winner, thirty three thirty five hundred bucks. Why? Why? Why does the Barstow win so much more money? Somebody give me the answer in chat. I'm going to go ahead and reset the, the dice roll files. Somebody tell me why the Barstow wins. It's it's a it's close to the real Barstow. It's two up and one down, Victor, which is the core version of it. What I don't do on my Barstow is take the same bet the first time. Um, tell me why though. Why does the Barstow and the Parlay Press show a profit? at all versus the clean. And, and again, put your answer in chat. Let me, I'm gonna change out the dice roll file here because I wanna see the other one. Let's do action, this will be interesting for us. Dice roll files, we're gonna pick file new, 50,000 roller. Make that thing activated, why? Somebody say, why is the Barstow so good? It's an even money ratchet. It is a ratchet, right? But the Barstow and the Power and the Parlay Press and the 1324, generally speaking, they make money because they attack a streak. The 1234 does not attack the streak very strongly, right? A one unit win is not that big of a deal. So it's not giving it a hammer, right? Barstows and, and Parlay Presses and 1324s and these other progression type systems, they destroy on a cold table because they're attacking the streaks. Now they will get burned in a streak just as well. So let's go ahead and run it now against the first 10,000 rolls of that 50,000 roll file. We're going to run the whole thing. I'm going to go re reset game new. Let's not save our stats. Let's rewind the dice file. Let me close the dice file so we're not slowed down. Let's run 10,000 more rolls, but this is a different set. We can change it. Let's change to the, uh, the Barstow guy and look at the jaggedness of the Barstow player versus the clean player who's relatively flatlining the don't pass is super flat, right? The tiny ladder, a little bit more jagged. The progressive small, a little more jagged. The parlay press, pretty stable actually. Um, it does have some, pike, some peaks and valleys. But you get a sense of it, right? You get a sense of watching these graphs. Who's putting money on the table? The odds players are really where the money's at. The, the odds players are putting out, like they're much more spiky up and down with their bets. We're almost there. We're at 6,500 bucks, 6,500 bets. <clears throat> yeah, AZ crap. There's a link. Um, I forget. There's a blog post out there um, where, the, where the Barstow is, is taught. And again, they cap it at like 11 units. I'm capping it at 200 bucks, just a random number. You can cap your bets wherever you want to. If I cap this thing at 500 bucks, it wins like 20 grand. It's crazy. 
All right, here we are. We stopped. Let's see, after 10,000 rolls in the 50,000 roll file, where did we land? Okay, the bar so now, 700 bucks. Parlay Press, 1750. One, two, three, four. 2025, which is interesting. Progressive odds and the small odds both lost money, right? Clearly, right, there was points being hit in here. You can tell by when the odds players are losing a lot of money like this, there was a lot of, there was a lot of points getting hit because you're getting destroyed here on the odds. These players that are doing the flat bets are just flat betting. And for the most part, like Parlay Press, only ever has one unit at risk. Same with one, two, three, four. Only ever has one unit at risk. So they are streak betting, very low volatility. Their volatility, they're, they're, they're basically playing a don't pass clean, but rocking a streak. That's the difference. So the odds players get hammered when points are being hit. Um, and of course, Tiny Ladder, 3160. Why so much money for Tiny Ladder? Points are being hit. So he's laddering up small amount of time. When those ladders come back down again, when they, he catches the same streak that these guys catch, right? His ladder system is working so much well in his favor. That's pretty cool stuff. Let me do this. Let me, um, <clears throat> I'm going to reset it one more time. We'll do one last trial here. Game new. This will make it even more interesting. I do not want to save my session. We do want to rewind, but I'm going to make one change. I'm going to go in here and say options, uh, set auto stop to zero. This time we're going to let it run for all 50,000 rolls. Okay. <clears throat> I stopped it at 10,000 for time the first time. This time I'm gonna run it for all 50,000. I know in this file, at the end, toward the end of this thing, the table changes. I think um, Robo who sent me the file said, this is interesting file, like it is random, but there are a couple of really big trends in here that you're gonna see. Watch the graph as it gets more towards the end. Um, you'll see exactly how much this thing goes haywire. Um, where for the first 10,000 rolls, we had those wins and losses that were kind of predictable. It's going to go nuts at the end here. So let's just see what happens. Let's let it run, run itself out and we'll see what goes on. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Ah, Clay Hall. I've sat on a few bar stools in my time. There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I can put a link out to the bar cell as well. It's actually one of those, um, <clears throat> it's like a parolee. You know, these guys, these mathematicians, guys that study stuff, you know, put my name on it because I've studied it kind of thing. So, um, yeah, Victor. So you can go, you can certainly go back, right? You can do the, uh, using a switch sides on the loss, the Barstow loss that I read about, um, it's two up, one down, two up, one down. You are switching sides essentially, but you're not also going, this is, this is right out of the, right out of the book. What I'm doing here, two up, one down is right out of the book. Um, I'm literally following to the letter. I'm not doing the actual numbers because I'm putting a cap on it. So it's a little bit different. <clears throat> Let's see, how close are we here? My goodness, 15,000, we're almost there. <clears throat> JR says, you wanna put a link in here, JR? Um, oh, maybe you can't, try it if you can. If there's a book, um, you want us looking at, um, drop it in, the, in there, or you can um, email me, or you can put it into Discord, and I can add a link to our resources section. <clears throat> You're saying, Victor, to go to, um, like, basically do a, do a uh, Bakra style on this thing, right? What he wants to know this um, on a tiny ladder at 10,000 rolls, the bet was at 115. So yeah, so at that point, um, what would have happened there is that yeah, it would have lost 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, all the way up. That would have been a horrible streak. That's probably why it was down so much at that point. Um, it just caught a rough a rough patch. But it, it always seems to seem like it seems like it always catches up to itself. But yeah, that's that's what would have happened there for sure. And that would explain why the the odds guys were losing too. Because if the, if, if the flat tiny ladder at $5 got itself to 115, imagine the butt kicking that the player the guys playing odds would have taken in those same roles that caused that. Imagine that. 
So here we go. Let's let's get it going. Come on, where are we at? Thirty thousand rolls. God, <clears throat> it does take a long time to get these things done. So, um, what other questions y'all have in chat while we're waiting for the next twenty thousand rolls to finish up? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the, the dolly, I'm doing, tomorrow I'm going to add the dolly in. Tomorrow I'm going to add three versions of the dolly. This is a great comment, actually. Tomorrow <clears throat> we're going to add the dolly, straight up three-point dolly max odds. We're going to add the dolly, three three bets <clears throat> with progressive odds on each one of them. We're going to do the dolly like the Johnny, basically. Those two will go head-to-head. -head. I'm also going to do the three-point dolly with the best progressive one that I can do. Okay, so the, like we're going to progress the winning DCs and DPs like this, either Barstow style, like I got here, or Parlay Press style. And I'm going to do um, the tiny press or the tiny ladder on all three bets as well. So we're going to have the tiny ladder, the flat, the, the flat runner, straight up dolly, and the progressive dolly. That's going to be your four champions tomorrow that are going to go up head to head. And we'll see tomorrow, not what's the best, but what does it look like to kind of merge those two with multiple? Multiple bets changes things, obviously. So um, we're almost done. We're another 10,000 rolls away from being done here, and we'll get our final tally, and we'll see who gets, who gets thumped and who makes money. I have a prediction, and actually I know what happens. So I, I, not really good prediction, but um, the Barstow not switching sides the way Victor's talking about could impact the final total here, but let's see what happens. Yeah, pretty much. Um, you may as well be a don't player. Uh, honestly, if you look at the first, the, the don't pass clean guy, and we'll go back to his his graph. Look at the don't pass. He's just not making or losing it. He's just sitting there at 25 bucks at a shot, kind of holding his own, right? Um, that's a fine way to, to, to stand around the table and not have a lot of volatility. Like if you're out there for a quote unquote night with friends and you, and you got to burn five hours, I would do that all day long, or the pass line. Either way, it's the same thing. Um, this is you're looking right there at house edge. That is the house edge running through you, right? That player is going to burn about eighty cents out of every twenty five bucks that he bets, whatever the whatever the number is. Um, that's what it's going to be. Some days he's going to catch a streak and win hundred bucks. Some days he's going to stay where he should be and lose fifty bucks. That's just that's the nature of it. Um, it's when you start getting odds changing your flats and chasing. I think the thing to me that's interesting about this whole system is watching the flat don't pass player win or lose a few hundred bucks versus attacking the streaks, which is the other guys are doing. The one, two, three, four, the parlay press and the Barstow are trying to attack streaks. What is the difference? Let's find out the difference. Let's see what now after 50,000 rolls, um, 57,000 rolls, what has happened? Let's find out. Any changes to the metrics up here? Oh boy, look at all the red. Um, check out what happened, please. Look at that. Um, look at what happened. The tiny ladder got a little thump in there, minus 4,000 bucks. Again, there's a weird streak in here where the don't pass gets destroyed, okay? The two odds players, though, look at them at fifteen and $19,000 in wins on the, uh, on the odds players. Why? They caught a hot streak and with the odds, pff, hammered the extra wins, right? All the streak betters lost by a lot. Again, there's a it, toward the end of this roll, there's a super hot streak where all the flats get hammered on the don't, and that's what happened up here. Even the, the clean don't player lost 3,000 bucks overall, okay? Only the odds players won because when they were winning, they were winning big, right? They were not laddering down, they were winning big. So there is the difference. Um, that's interesting to see. Um, it looked good at 10,000 rolls, right? It looked really good against my rolls, my 3,000 rolls. It looks really bad the longer you get out there. And with a, with tables that have actual streaks in them, you can see where these things go. <clears throat> It'd be interesting for me to go back and look at this file and see where in the file those those bad streaks happen and what causes them. I'm going to do it one more time. We're going to do. We're just going to talk for another minute or so. Um, not going to save nothing. Okay. Um, let's go to our dice roll file though and not do it. Let's go dice roll files. I'm going to turn this thing off. Let's do a few thousand on the RNG, which I know people don't like. 
the RNG, but let's play the RNG. And let's see what this thing does just on its own, rolling its own dice and not using our files. So um, let's see, let's see what is happening here. Um, uh, anything else in chat? Jen is saying, I agree with you, Vic. Oh, because he's saying, yeah, the, the, the odds is a good basic bet, right? And this kind of shows that, right? I think, I think we've seen, to me, the tiny, the tiny ladder, $5 is about the right ladder for the flat. Odds on that, you can see what the odds do to your wins here. Again, in those other streaks where we had the bad runs, the odd players got destroyed. So that can go, that can burn you both ways for sure. So um, let's go, we'll do another, we'll go to, we'll go to 10,000 and we'll stop. And we'll see what it would what have done here. Mm, almost, 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 almost. Let's see, random RNG, 10,000 rolls, stop, how we do? Oh my God, what happened? Look at the right side action on this table. That was a hot set of RNGs right there. Everybody got destroyed in that run. That's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, good old RNG for you, right? Everybody, everybody loses here on the don't pass on this time. Um, all right, there it is. Let's go back to the other screen. Let's chat a minute. Let's chat a minute here. All right, um, stupid lights on again. Learned a couple things. One is, um, Victor, if you want me to redo the, or do another Barstow tomorrow, I can put them in there with, when we switch to the, to the other side on the streak, we can do that and catch the same streak. It's not hard, not hard to code that up. Um, just a matter of, this is about a light switch. But again, um, reading, reading what I read on that um, and that, that streak progression that we have, it's fine. Um, I think there's, there's learnings in here. Do I have an answer for this yet? No, no answer. Other than to say the flat bet, the straight up flat don't, right, is gonna be house edge and very streak in, um, um, susceptible. On a bad streak, it's just gonna go straight down. There's no recovery path, right? The tiny press, right, on a bad streak will get higher bets. When it catches up, they will catch up and you'll end up making money out of it in the end. It works really well. Um, on a good run, those progressives do way better than everything else. And in fact, um, even the parlay press in this bad run lost 5,000, where the don't pass clean lost 3,000, okay? So the opportunity cost was only about 30 or 40% there on that one, which isn't terrible. So I think there's, 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 there's interesting things to look at. The, the, the two odds players here got destroyed. So I don't know, the odds, the odds to me, highly volatile. If they work, they work really good. If they don't work good, they are, they will send you to zero faster than anything else. So you gotta, to me, it's like the odds might be a kind of thing where you think about playing the odds in this in the in the burn, right? Once you're once you're in that positive trend, that's when maybe you put the odds out there. And maybe you work that negative progression a little bit, the tiny press, when it's not going your way. And then once you start winning, then you can progress and put the odds on. We could put some logic into this thing as well. Right now, I'm just hammering the bets. There's no, there's no decision making. There's no, you know, after two losses, stop playing. There's no, like, no environmental changes made to the scripts at all. They're just straight up on repeat. So you're gonna get kind of like the vomit of, of results here. So anyway, there it is, guys. I think that's, um, that was good stuff. That was fun to do. I'll do more of that uh, tomorrow. We'll have another set of players out here tomorrow. And maybe even more when I come back from my vacation. I think this can go on forever. Skill says I have more PCs. Reminding me of my, my job here, Skill. What are the new PCs that I got here? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, it says these tell us um, it's not the strategies, it's the same amount of roles for every table, type condition, blah, 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 then we can, what do, what do you want me to do? These roles tell us it's not just a strategy. You have to make the same X amount of roles for every table type. Um, you're right, yeah. So I think what you're talking about is, is this. I, I've got, I'm trying to work it out still to get the perfect set of conditions, but um, you want to see these strategies. How do they work when you've got 11 straight points made, 11 straight points missed? when it's chopped, when it's all come out with, I gotta I got make a quote unquote perfect set of roles that assert every possible condition of a table. 
and run the strategies through the perfect set of rules. This is just 57,000 live table rules. So it's basically a random sample that I can repeat the, the thing on. And we know what's, we, we know what's gonna happen here, right? It's, it's predictable. And that's how you tune a strategy against something like that you know the outcome of. But yeah, you're right, Skill. We have to go back and make the quote unquote, the perfect set of roles, like that, that butter zone roll file to really test about. So I, I will definitely get, get through with that. Um, old number seven's got a new philosophy, starting in the middle and pressing both ways, which we have to talk about over email probably. Um, Jen, DC instead of DP or DC with, like, and I will do that tomorrow. When I do the, the three point dolly, I'm gonna do a don't pass and two don't comes, and I'm gonna do three don't comes. We're gonna try it both ways and see what the real difference there is. Because again, the multiple come out loser scenario is real. So the DC has an advantage there for sure. So we'll see how that, how that works. Um, all right, guys, I think that's it. Um, I think it's, I've covered every question. We've talked about all the things. We've seen all the data that I have to show you at this point. Um, I'll tweak the bar still a little bit, and tomorrow we'll have another four or five things going against one another. And we'll, again, WinCraft is a great tool for this kind of thing. You don't know what's going to happen. And um, it does make you think about when you're coding these things up, like what's, what are all the options? So I think it's, uh, it's fun. Anyway, that's it, folks. Um, I'm going to get out, go to my work, and have a good day. And um, hopefully tomorrow's a better day for me. I know I woke up shitty this morning. I had a bad day out there and a little salty. Tomorrow will be a better day. Y'all have a good one. Happy Wednesday, and God bless everybody. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.